Lately, a lot of our mail is from people who are getting ready to get out, and they have no idea how to do this, this process. And hey, here's an example. <clears throat> Dated September 26, 2010. Dear sir, ma'am, good day to you. I'm interested in learning all I can regarding what information you might have on re-entry and resources for it. I've been in prison almost two years, well above half spent in solitary confinement. My parole date's January 2011, and I do not have a place to live. I must find one when I get out. It looks like I'll be paroling to Orange County in Southern California. Any and all help would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, and have a pleasant day, Justin. And it just goes on and on. Can you help me? I'm getting out soon. I need reentry help and resources. I'm incarcerated in the state prison and soon to be released to the county of Riverside. I have nowhere to live. I have no job. I have no family to help me when I'm released. Any information would be greatly appreciated. My name's Michael and I'm finishing a seven-year prison term at the California Correctional Institution in Calachapi, California. I was wondering if you have any help available for Orange County area, California. Let me start by saying <clears throat> I'm glad to have your address from someone in prison and I'm glad that there's help at the end of the day for people like myself that have no family. All of my youth was spent in group homes. I'm looking forward to having your info. info. Um, I need a job and school and a place to call home. I can't wait to be out one day and have a career and not to worry about living on the streets anymore. I have no family to help me with any of my paperwork or even go about this the right way. I'm hoping you can help me in some way to start a better life and a chance at life. Also, is there any aid that will help me because I grew up in group homes? I'm in a prison cooking and I get out December 12th. I'll do whatever it takes if somebody could help me a little bit. So please help me. Anyway, it's, uh, and now I'm upset, but no, that's it's ridiculous. daunting, these people. That's ridiculous. They go there, they put them in, and then they don't help them. Then they're just put out on the street, they have nothing. They don't know what to do. And, um, and we get, these are probably the overwhelming kind of letters we get. Along with, you know, here's my story, please tell it. But, uh, yeah, sometimes they're a letter from somebody that's turning 70 and they've been in prison for 40 years. And they don't know what they're going to do when they get out. You know, there's nothing uh, absolute to help people who say, I did not do this. Those people just said I did it. And I had... And then my lawyer told me, if I didn't plead guilty, I might get life. So I had to plead guilty. It's kind of like the witches of Salem. You know, they could save their lives if they said they were a witch. Then they wouldn't hang them. They might get tuberculosis in the prison. Um, but they wouldn't, you know, be sentenced to death. And this is very reminiscent of that. A lot of people just, I'm guilty, I'm guilty, to save their life. They really, um, they overuse a law um, that was used in my case, too. They use a, the law of constructive possession in a lot of drug cases. So this is an easy one to put on somebody when the police uh, come into a residence or arrest some people in a car. Everybody that could have access to the drug uh, gets charged. Just uh, throw them in and then sort them out. So con constructive possession is a pretty tough uh, charge to beat. And uh, you can't, really. If you're near it and you could have access to it, you, you say, well, I'm in possession of drugs or a gun, you know, something illegal. We got an email a couple of days ago from a man with a very good job. He lives in a northern state. And he writes he was within a thousand feet of a school, so they're telling him he's going to do 10 years, which will destroy his life. It's over. Well, he's that a, was marijuana. 
It was a marijuana case. He's had electrical business for years. He has an outstanding education. He's a, he told me his whole story in a brief email, and then he's charged with this law, with this, uh, you know, within a thousand feet of a school. And otherwise, it doesn't look like he's done much wrong other than break the drug laws. Marijuana law. But, his, uh, but here he is, a solid family man in the community, and now he's got to deal with this. It's, uh, so he'll lose everything. There'll be no electrical business when he's done. Most people, yeah. their divorces take place within the first two years of incarceration. And most children, well, you know, the wall, back to the wall and children. Lately, we've had calls from the children who are grown, and they see their picture on our website. And they call and they say, do you know how to get a hold of this man? And I can tell when it's kids. So I've, grown, I've gotten to where I'll say, are you a child estranged from a parent? Yes, that's my picture on your website when I was mm -hmm. a little girl. And I would love to get a hold of my dad. Can you help me find him? So we find parents for children that have been estranged after 20 years of imprisonment. So when you ask what we do, boy, it's not a lot of direct service. It's a lot of empowering people to take some control what they can of their lives in a situation when you don't have much. Prison takes away a lot of a person's control. And they there, then they become controlled. And you feel that way as a family member too.